Welcome back to the East Circuit, the only place to turn up your weekend. I'm Mike Itzona, and it's at Mika underscore Kenya on every social media platform. And of course, DJ Nishke is waiting for your request at DJ Nishke. Uh, the question of the day, yeah, Leo, it's because it's with, it, it, with regard to tomorrow being Mother's Day, May 10th. Uh, how would you show appreciation to your mom? Uh, let us know at Y254 channel using the hashtag Isakit. Next up is an interview uh, with some innovative guys. Uh, it's a partnership between Meru University uh, of Science and Technology and, of course, uh, Nai Multi-Technology Innovations. They just created something really interesting uh, with a fight against COVID-19. You remember uh, just a few weeks ago, the CS of Ministry of Health challenged the youth. Akasama, uh, the youth need to do something. Uh, it's equal to the other guys. Let me, let me call them the other guys as for now, uh, who are fighting uh, COVID-19. He, he was challenging the youth as well. So we have a few friends of the ESAC is here. If you can introduce yourselves. Camera number four is yours. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Cesar Bundi. Uh, I am the Chief Operations Officer of Night Technologies. Uh, I'm here to talk about the uh, partnership between NITEC and Meru University. Uh, it's called Covident. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Thank you. I'm uh, Bundi. I should say I'm Engineer Bundi. <laughs> uh, yeah, these things are earned. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the CEO of NITEC and um, we're here to talk about Covident and innovations that youth can do to change the to change the landscape of you know economics and operations in Africa. And now let's talk about uh, this platform, the Covident. Covident. Yes, Covident. I'm pronouncing it properly. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Covident platform. Yeah. Well, what is it exactly? No. Covident is a word coined from COVID, you mm -hmm. know, COVID-19, and identification. So you have Covident. It is a digital marker and identifier of all the subjects of mass testing. Much later, after we have a vaccination, it will be an immunization passport. Just like your yellow fever passport, uh, uh, sorry, yellow fever card that you, you know, if you want to leave the, uh, any African country, you need to have that. Mm. What it does, it makes life easy for the government to enforce um, measures against the spread of COVID, which, which everybody needs to do anyway, and then makes it measurable, then makes it easier for the public to partner with the government in the fight against COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a case in point, if I could throw that in. Uh, Right now, restaurants are supposed to be open. Mm. And they are supposed to go for, you know, all the operators need to go for a COVID test. You know, it's expensive. It's around 10,000 shillings for each test. You go there, a lot of writing is done, you know, you fill forms, and then you are given a result, a result form. Which and that's has, it. And that's it. Mm. That can be forged. Everybody agrees. Oh, this is Kenya, you know. The river road. Yeah, anything can be forged. <laughs> <laughs> True. And, and then, um, you can lose your results slip. What happens? You have to go back for another test. Mm. Another 10,000 shillings. Another 10,000 shillings. Mm. How much does you know, a cook, a waiter at a restaurant That's make? almost like uh, the whole salary. Probably a whole, whole month's month salary, exactly. Mm. That's not enforceable. You know, it's, not, it's not even sustainable. It's not realistic. It's not realistic. Our truck guys are supposed to be tested every 14 days. You know, if you're crossing the border. That means every 14 days you need to go for a test. Right now we are uh, on the 43rd, 44th day of the curfew. That means every fourth night they should be having around six result slips of COVID results. You know, also not sustainable. Very soon they are going to start walking around with files to show that they've been tested. This solves that. All those things are compressed into this. Uh, we had an easily lockdown. You know, just the other day. And uh, almost half the residents at Isli uh, migrated. Migrated. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We saw that situation. Point. It was very tricky. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. That beats the logic of locking it down anyway. Because if almost half moved, then what does the government need to You're not really down? controlling the spread of COVID-19. Yeah. So you need to be able to identify them. With COVID, you're able to walk to any restaurant into a matatu. You know, if a government says you must produce this, uh, this card, just scan, you know, a camera, it's a 1.2 second thing, the results come up. Where you live comes up. Um, it's something I can demo if, uh, much later probably in the show. Uh, the results come up and there you live. So anybody that moved out of a lockdown area uh, is able to be identified. And you just show up, you, you could have tested negative, yeah. Mm -hmm. But since you come from an area that is flagged as red, you should be taken back or to some quarantine place. 
That's the only way the government can measurably enforce anti-COVID measures. And if that is done, we, we believe there's a statistical model that uh, the investor has been working on. We believe within the next 43, okay, it, there's a, a variation between 38 and 43 days, we will be able to start opening up, opening up the economy. Right now, we assume everybody else is COVID positive, mm. which is not true. Probably 90% of Kenyans is negative. are negative. Mm. But since you don't know if this guy is positive, we have to lock everything down. Beats, you know, it beats the economical uh, cycle. Progress, yeah. yeah. And f we have no strategy on how to open up. China has opened up. Uh, South Korea is opening up. Some parts of the US, Florida, I think, opened up some two weeks ago on a Friday. Those people have been able to do that because they have a way of marking and identifying people that are infected, those that are not infected, and, and to also raise alarm when somebody who shouldn't be in circulation is actually in circulation in mm. an easy, smooth, favorable, and measurable manner. And that's what we ought to do here. With COVID and with COVID, with regard to now uh, the the tracing and the tracking, uh, yes. we're going to talk about you know the implications of security yep. of uh, people's uh, data yeah. later on. But before that, I would like to discuss like you know the partnership now. How did you guys get in contact with Nitec? Uh, so what's the partnership about? Why did you come into the fold? Uh, I'll start by saying that uh, Nitec is a tech company. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly young tech company. We have uh, a number of innovations. There are quite a number. L just like Engineer Bundi said, there are over 40. Mm. And uh, we got into a consortium with Meru University to enable accelerate these innovations, involve the students, involve the administration, involve the uh, tech department uh, uh, in availing these solutions through the youth uh, in a more streamlined, streamlined manner uh, and so that they can be able to go to the public faster easier and more effectively. And I'll narrow down to the COVID uh, specifically. We figured that if we go through the university, if we get into a consortium, a partnership, a working partnership, a corporate partnership with the university, it will be able, it will be possible for us to avail this solution in a faster and more effective way, especially during this period. Uh, for instance, if you consider the the financial beating of specifically African countries are taking due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Actually, World Health Organization is projecting uh, at the very least uh, a recession or even a, a financial depression post uh, COVID-19. So we found it timely to partner with the university to avail this solution promptly. Uh, to hasten? Yeah, to hasten uh, the, the during this period. Uh, okay. We also found out that the university is, more, is willing, it mm -hmm. has the facilities, it has the, the workmanship uh, yeah. and the facilities generally to, and the goodwill to make sure this uh, innovation sees the, the light of day. So I think Bundi, Engineer Bundi will, will add more information on that. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, being a CEO at times, you have to take all the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, by the way, he's my bro, mm -hmm. my kid bro. So. Uh, it's something we've, we've worked together with and we have many other guests behind us. Now, how we got into the partnership with Mary University. Mary University is an innovation-led university. Actually, the chancellor, who is Dr. Mwangi, gave a, a personal donation of 100 million to set up an innovation center at the university, and uh, it's complete. So, uh, being an innovation-led entity and seeing the experience we had, we saw the need to come together to use the tech they have, you know, to use the facilities they already have. Uh, I think only two other universities have similar facilities, as Moy and JK Yacht, mm. who are already working <coughs> on big government projects, tech projects. Using those, those are the, the, the facilities they have, we help them transform innovations at the university, you know, being done by the kids and the lecturers, into commercial innovations you know mm. something that converts into money you know you need to earn that shilling after you need all. to earn it yeah yeah like you said you earned the title yeah definitely. so the money <laughs> should come <laughs> with the title yeah it has to yeah. it has to so um when 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 we when we, when we engage the leadership they're very open people very futuristic and you know uh, uh supportive guys you know with the goodwill and they told us come on set up everything let's do this you guys come in and you realize also our, our universities are having a big issue raising you know, money to run entities. So that serves as an IGU, income generating unit for mm -hmm. the university. 
we are projecting within the next two years they should be able to 100% finance all the operations. They, don't, they, they may not need funding from the central government. Uh, you can do it yourself. Yes, yes mm. they can do it themselves. Like if, if, if they invest with all the power it has and all the countries that are trying to come on to COVID, and if this runs well, the income is so much that uh, the university can, you know, the university can self-sustain and even probably donate to the central government. And this is the time. This is the time for African Renaissance. It's the fourth industrialization period. Mm. And uh, it's the youth that will lead it. Now, with regard to you know, the structure, now we understand it, how you came together, yeah. why you came together. Yes. But now, like you said, you need money to make money. True. With regard to COVID, COVID uh, people would, would assume you know, something like to have the servers now. Mm -hmm. Because you know, you're projecting to have a lot of people in your servers. Yep. So you need a lot of money yes. to buy those servers. Yes, yes. So with regard to funding for COVID, and how did you go about it? Now, um, each of these two entities put in resources. Uh, when you get to a partnership, you always have a financial understanding on um, who's bringing what to the table. Uh, we noticed the scope, you know, the traffic we're going to get, the scale this thing is getting into, you know, the scale that we have to, the scale of the infrastructure you need to put to handle the traffic coming in. And the first thing we did as a, as a tech company, we went in and bought three servers. Three servers for backup, that's to handle the security. Uh, the capacity is like? For someone who knows about these things? Oh, oh, okay, they vary. Mm -hmm. there's, there's one that is at um, 67 TB okay. terabytes. Uh, that's pretty yeah, that's lots big, of, yeah. yeah. Uh, then there's one, the server space now, a cloud server space, uh, based in San Francisco, the US, which is unlimited. Uh, they have that space, you know, they, ho they offer to specific companies uh, when you put in, but it's pretty expensive to do that. Then there's one we've put up at um, the university premises, not too big, but it handles the local traffic. The local traffic. The local traffic. Uh, let me not disclose that one for proprietary reasons, mm -hmm. uh, because again, you don't want people rushing down there and messing up exactly, stuff. Exactly. True, true, true. And then we have unlimited bandwidth. That's something we've, we, we had to get into, unlimited bandwidth. And uh, we're hoping to put in redundancy lines. We haven't done that because traffic is not yet as, as big. A redundancy line that will be able to handle any input given. Just to make sure there's no cap of usage. Perfect. Yeah. Ah, looks like you're a tech guy. Thank you. To <laughs> easy you, you, you feel that, right? <laughs> you feel that in pretty well. Yeah. So uh, raising the money, both entities put in something. Mm -hmm. And we used what we already had, given, OK, we're in core, uh, that's our core business. And uh, yeah, I think we spent upward of 10 million shillings wow. now. Already? Yeah, yeah. Now, in terms of now the government, because you need the government to be on board with this. Yes. And now let's talk about the Kenyan government before we go outside, because the, this is something that should be applied all over the continent. Yes, yeah? yes, yes. But now, what about the Kenyan government? Uh, how far is the conversation with regard to implementing COVID and with the people? OK. Uh, I, could le I could like him to go first, but let me, let me do that. OK. Uh, we may not disclose what we are doing with the <coughs> clans. You realize it's also a security thing, yeah? mm. uh, their procurement and all those. But the clans actually are governments. Uh, governments and counties in Kenya now, those are autonomous entities. Uh, so far, we are having discussions. Uh, they like what we're doing. The minister, the, C the CS for ICT, on 21st of April, launched, actually gazetted a team, a secretariat to handle all tech around COVID-19. Uh, hosted at the CA, Communications Authority. And uh, we've submitted our, 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 our the innovation. Uh, we hope when they do the first budge, the first release on engagement, that should be sometime, I think, this month. Yeah, they haven't put that out. Hopefully. So, yeah, hopefully this month. It mm -hmm. needs to happen fast because the <coughs> pandemic is, is crazy. Uh, ours should be somewhere up there. Mm. So uh, we have, you know, we've used all the, uh, the channels that the government puts in for for such things to be onboarded onto the government, and it's doing pretty well. Uh, though, probably to note, uh, uh, it has to, some are coming in parallel. Uh, mm. there, are, there are other countries, African countries are actually r running so fast. They're really talking about, oh, let's partner on these, let's roll these out and all those things. And how did they, yeah. did, how did they get to know about COVID and the other countries now and get in touch with you guys? Uh, mm, how the other countries got to know about COVID? And I, I'll start by saying, personal links, mm -hmm. uh, personal networks. 
uh, and also the university leagues. Yeah, you're big guys, yeah? Huh? You know, presidents. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, not really, we can't say that, but uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I'll say personal net networks. Mm -hmm. uh, the CEO is well traveled, I'd say, uh, and he's been around for quite some time in the tech. Uh, industry. Mm -hmm. Also, the university has solid connect connections and networks, corporate <coughs> networks, uh, and we figure that if we can uh, leverage upon the university networks and uh, the personal networks as well. Sorry. And also and the, the personal. Uh, networks. The personal networks. Mm -hmm. uh, the university, for instance, has a solid uh, connection with the financial institutions in the country. I might not be able to maybe mention exactly which one, but. Uh, through the links of the universities, we, are, we have been able to talk to financial institutions in the, in the country and corporate organizations out of the country, including NGOs, uh, and have been able to bring them on board and maybe explore the possibility of this uh, innovation and the possibility of us taking it out of the country in a more solid way, uh, in our financially, using a financially viable model so that we can get returns, financial returns. This is really nice. I, I like the innovation. I like the idea, and it's very applicable, and we really need it. Like you said, we need to hasten that movement so that you get the support you need. Uh, with regard, to, now we understand you need the government support, but sure. also the financial support is needed. Just in case you need more backup servers and all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, angel investors, are you welcoming them, or is it just Meru and Nitec along with the governments? And uh, oh. so, what if someone comes right now? Yeah. For instance, and they say, sir, like a shark tank, shark yes. tank type of thing. Yeah. I like your idea. I'm going to fund the idea, make sure it's up and running, but I want like 60% of the company. What would you say? <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, you took it to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we are welcoming all those entities that are willing to come in and partner because, you know, if you want to, if you want to slaughter an uh, uh, a cow, a you course. don't do it alone. Mm. You have, you need all these people, somebody to hold the legs, somebody to hold the, you know, the, the head and all this for it to be successful and fast. Uh, we are actually, we have a few, they're called venture capitalists who've, who've come on board. We are actively dealing with a few of them, but uh, not on, uh, not a on. shares basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, for the youth, that's what, um, that, that's partly what kills us. Uh, you come in, you want, you, you want a quick car, you want a, a quick house. At a muscle of bread. You're not looking bread, at the long game. Yes, mm. yes. At a muscle of bread, you know, something, somebody comes and tells you, oh, come on, I'm giving you some, you know, $10,000. And you leave everything. 60%, that means the guy is controlling the company. You will be the employee of the guy. Mm. When it's your innovation. When it's yeah. your innovation, you bear the vision. And um, probably something I could, I could talk to the youth about. In these things, look at the long game. Sit in there. Uh, he said, I've been, I've, I've been in it long. Um, I'm not a party. He uh, made it look like I'm really, really old. <laughs> <laughs> but but what, what, what we've been doing is um, we started from university. Uh, we, almost the entire team were students in, uh, in public universities, local public universities. And we used to do things then. We used to work with, you know, uh, creating innovations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we have a portfolio of around 46 of them mm. with 23 copyrights. And we didn't get this far by taking on board money, taking on board um, venture capitalists or sharks in exchange for money and then moving on. No, no, no. You hold it and you keep running. No, for us, we need the support, all the support we can, but favorable support, you know, fair partnership. Uh, you bring in your one shilling, you get your one, your one, maybe one share over a period of time, not 100%. Mm. Because uh, if Facebook did that, Come on, nobody could ever know of Zuckerberg. Exactly, something yeah. time limited. That's very, that's very smart, Nishke. Yeah. You see, that's smart. Uh, a time limited share type of thing. Yeah. So that uh, I'm talking about profits. You ship off. Some of them were losing their own the ownership of the patent and everything. Yep, 100%. Speaking of patents, yes. I hope no one is going to l watch the e-circuit and be like, I'll steal this idea. No, we've, we've learned over time that, uh, you know, there are things you do, you see them, coming out from other big telcos that you can't take to court, you know, attend to just, oh, let, let go. So one of the first things we do is patent what you've done. Actually, we do stepped patenting. Each time our R&D team comes up with something big, uh, even if it's on COVID and itself, 
we put in another patent and another patent, another patent. To we show the updates. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And we have a pretty good legal team, pretty solid legal team. Uh, uh, I should mention. For instance, his younger <laughs> brother, yeah. it looked like he could be a really good lawyer. <laughs> 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 he's just like, yeah? <laughs> he's pretty relaxed. He's a statistician, no? Huh? I wish I could be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. Oh. I'm a statistician. Mm. But the, yeah. my twin sister is a lawyer. Ah, nice. A tough one at that. And, um, Intelligence runs in the family. Oh, we could say that. We could ask oh, the dad. Oh, you know, you're, never, you're never really sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a story for another day. That's a story for another day. Nice. Uh, now, with the, regard to COVID, COVID, like I said, it's a very good innovation. Thank you. But uh, with regard to your, the bio for COVID, yes. there's applications for more yes. in the future yes. after COVID 19. Yes. Such as? Thank you. Um, Ezra, go in. You, you can start the night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want him to get to my level really soon. Yeah, but it's soon. okay. You know, operations guys seem to be quiet and, mm. you know, locked up. Now, um, we've been talking about immunization passports. Actually, you check, you go, I do a random Google online, uh, Google search, you'll get the European Union are considering actively asking for an immunization passport mm. before you get the Schengen visa. You can go to Europe without that passport. Of course, we don't have a vaccine right now, but it's something they're looking at. Right now, for you to move, uh, is it KQ that took off last yesterday, but one? Mm -hmm. And guys that to be tested, you know, to show that you've been tested and all that. Now, after COVID, there's something called Health Hub that we are putting together. It's okay. It's really, really, really done. We are planning to throw in all these uh, immunization passes into one card. Like a yellow fever. Perfect. Everything yeah, else. Yeah, you know, yellow fever is one card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Imagine having, you have your passport, you have probably a visa for the country you're visiting, then you have you the yellow have fever thing. Card. You just, just need like a passport. One card. Everywhere. Yes. Scan and it fixes everything for you. Just like Lord of the Rings, one card to rule them all. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good connection. That's, that's true. I, I like that idea, but now with regard to that one, mm -hmm. won't it be a bit more difficult? Because there are people who have some investment in yes. those cards, like uh, for instance, that yellow fever card. Yeah, yeah. There are hospitals even that uh, were trying to create a monopoly, like where the well, people who give the yeah. best vaccinations yeah. here yeah, that yeah. will last for 10 years. So. Yeah. Don't you feel like, you know, you would have to fight them, Ezra? Uh, I don't think it will be a competition or a fight, mm -hmm. or rather a complementation of what they are already doing. You know, when you introduce a, a solution which is more efficient and effective, uh, it's only much... But tunajua kuna wale vichwangumu. Yeah, <laughs> kuna wale vichwangumu, but tunajua sasa it will be upon them to, to come on board. Mm. Because I, 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 I don't use the words uh, selfish or short-sightedness or mm. myopic it will it will it will be a, a show of selfishness not to come on board as, as a platform which gives you a solution because you fear competition mm. you'd rather come on board uh, as a partner to complement the solution if the solution is truly an effective and more efficient solution for instance it is because i remember i lost that yeah. yellow fever card like the first after going to tanzania <laughs> yeah. They come back with it. So, you know, it's <laughs> exactly. have this card that you can put in your wallet. Yeah, Napia, it is difficult to authenticate the yellow fever. Yeah, exactly, the, the, because yeah. like we said, these you can, attest, you can just go to River Road. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And, and get uh, them. you have yeah. your pass. Yeah. Ex all the time. So you if know what we get to losing this card, though? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a number there. Yes. Tell us about this number so that we, we really see the efficiency of COVID. -19. Because whether you have the card or not, yes. if you have this number stored somewhere like uh, your Google Drive or something, yeah. you can still get access to your records, yeah? Yes. How does that work? No, this is how it works. Uh, first and foremost, uh, there's something called uh, a reverse efficiency. Mm. This card is not good because it's a card. It's good because it's linked to a server somewhere. Exactly. Actually, you photocopy this card, you'll use it as though it's the original card. What matters is the info behind the code. Use your phone, anybody's phone. You don't need to, know, to download any special uh, um, you know, application. Mm. Use your phone and your, uh, your camera, scan it. It gives you all the data. You lose this card. If you had a photocopy, you do that. If you don't have all those, but you've crammed this code up here, uh, you can see yeah, the number up here. It's alphanumeric. You give the number 
right now anybody on tv can you can go online go to covid.id yeah get this code right now type it in there you'll get the results the testing results and everything yes. else actually the effective and date stops. of the results to a microsecond uh -huh. yeah so uh we don't want to lock people down to you know you must have this physical thing you can't pass through personal have been quarantined in ghana once accra wow. the kotoka international airport mm -hmm. And it was hectic to, you, you know, to move that. around and mm. it, it was just, you know, you're lost. Uh, and it's embarrassing. Very embarrassing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I was doing something for the UN. And, you know, it looks really bad on you and your organization. Uh, if I had this number, I could have given them the number. Not that I did have a valid yellow fever card. I had a va actually a lifelong yellow fever card. But they had no way of saying it's fake or not. Probably it's my small body. Oh, this guy shouldn't be traveling around <laughs> here. <laughs> so uh, with the number, they deal with the server. And you get all your information. And you get all your critical. information, yes. This is something that really needs to be implemented really, really soon. Uh, you young guys doing great things for our country. Uh, Nido, when you talk touch bearers. Yeah, trailblazers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a, a funny thing. Yeah. OK, it's funny depending on the side you're looking at. Don't worry, we'll laugh. <laughs> Don't laugh too hard because of the people who are paying uh, lights and electricity here. Okay. So uh, there's the Huduma number, okay. which is uh, supposed to be implemented and circulating. Uh, do you think this can come into the fold of that and be used somehow as an identification thing as well? Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. You know, Huduma number, the idea behind Huduma number was to give um, a unique identifier that mm -hmm. links all your other um, so, cards, you know, all, all the other uh, items. You know, your NHIF, NSSF, ID. In other words, all the services from the all government. The all the services. So with regard to like, uh, how you're planning to implement all those services into one, but now it's more like data collection yes. and uh, showing the results uh, whenever need be. Mm -hmm. So do you think this can actually be the next for the number type of situation? Not just revealing uh -huh. information and stored data uh -huh. and actually helping someone uh, connect to all the services using that number and that barcode. Yeah, definitely. That's plans what plans for that in the future? We, we, we have that in mind. And uh, uh, that, of course, re uh, remains solely on the client. From our side, now the client is the government. Mm. Uh, they, they, they love their own tours, terms of reference. They'll say, oh, come on, we like the card, or we like this and that. We need you to add this. Even if they say, we, we need you to add the ID of your grandmother, mm. we will do that. We are, we are techies, and that's what we do, uh, really. Client puts in there, we put it. But this is scalable, big time. It can actually even have all your results. But from, as, from for now, as for making now, making sure COVID-19 is eradicated within the country. Yeah, you need to focus right now. We are into With COVID. COVID-19, yeah, yes. more pressing matter. Yes, yes, we're I into like COVID. That. Thank you so much for coming. Ezra, you have something and to I, say? I'll say this. Uh, when you came in, you, you, the first question was, is this an app? Mm. I'll maybe like to offload uh, this misconception mm -hmm. that every other tech platform uh, which is coming up should be an app. I don't think it's... It's a general misconception in the public, especially among young people. Not every platform which offers a solution, a tech solution, should be an application. Mm -hmm. should be made into an application. For instance, how often do you use your Safaricom application? Not very often. The public is more receptive to an easily accessible service. I, I like Ezra's point of view because yeah. it's like he's saying not everyone goes on Instagram. It's like there are yeah. people who read books. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. I like that perspective. Yeah, and, yeah. and an application is tedious. Getting mm. an, most people might not be able to, to accept and it, in but terms it's, it's of tedious. The constant updates, but with yeah. servers, the back end, you can control it more easily yeah. than going yeah. to individual phones and making sure they're updated. Yep. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any Maybe last I, words to the people? I should talk about the change thing you talked about. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, this is first and foremost a business. You know, we are, we are in the business of making money. But we don't make money. We, okay, we make money by solving problems, you know, pandemics. Like n right now, we have this pandemic. Now, the guys for Yellow Fever, for example, there are people that are hugely invested. You know, it's, it's a big thing. You know, you have to pay around 3,800 exactly. to get your Yellow Fever, uh, all those other things. Something I could say to them, I want to, I want to say they are the others, as you said. Mm -hmm. You can never stop change. Uh, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. And again, this is an African renaissance. Give the youth that space. Let them show you how it's done. You can always scale up. You can always scale up. Uh, Netflix was there when we had all these things. It has scaled up to a tech company, you know, one of the biggest 
um, video, you know, video thing in the in, in, the, in the industry. So this is the this is the this is the future. Either you come in peace, or we come and pass with you. Just to get mob drop. For those who know, called cutting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you so Did much. You what about thank you, Israel? Yes, mm -hmm. that's that's okay. I wanted to inquire whether maybe you could do a, a demo. Please do, that's a really good idea. If you can have oh, camera so number four. Message. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, you can see, this is my phone. This is the card. Um, I switched on my camera. Yes, no more camera. And look at that. Within, that's 1.2 seconds, we have the results, you know. With no application downloading. No application, no. Just, just the camera. You can use it on your phone. Mm -hmm. Shows, uh, oh, green, of course, shows this person is negative, but you go down to show the name, the other details. Um, you'll see the effective date. Effective date is... Uh, do, do you mind doing it just once more? Okay, let me do that again. You can have that close-up camera number four. You see that? This is just a normal phone. That's the confident card this with the barcode and the number. Yes. And a normal camera, camera phone. Yes, so I put on my camera. With no application, just the camera. No application. That's the camera. Mm -hmm. And I hope you can get that. Okay. And immediately, the results. Immediately, you get your results. Nice. The face of the person. So just in case you're stopped by any cop, you're like, uh, let her let see move. Yes. You <laughs> <laughs> know, they don't even need to touch you. Others have an issue of, uh, you know, a guy taking your ID card and giving it back. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, come yeah. on. Are you sure I'm not giving you COVID or you're not giving exactly. me, you know? I'm just from... Nice. <laughs> I like that implementation that. as well. You know, do that from a distance. If you don't want to show it to him, this is the code. Type it in. Da -da 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 -da. And you have it. You can do it on your phone and show him. Now, the effective date is something about the effective date. You, know, you can be tested today, and the same evening you get COVID, right? Mm. Uh, assume you want people to, st or, you know, people always come into the studios here. You can have your own threshold, just like the truck drivers have their fortnight. Every two weeks they have to be tested. Over here you can say, nobody's allowed to come here if you're not tested within the last two days, for example. So when the guard at the door does that, and checks and sees, you see the effective date here? Mm. And sees it's beyond the So the two effective days. date also determines like uh, the effectiveness. Yes, the when app. were you last tested? When were you last te tested, depending on the traffic of where you are. Yes, yes, like yes, yes. And then down here, we have, um, let me, oh my, my data wasn't on, let me now have that. So that we, we link to the, it's li it links to the Google Maps, sorry, just a quick one. Mm -hmm. uh, down here, it shows where you live. You see, like as you scroll down, you see the pin of where you live. You know, when you when you are tested. When you get to that pin, is it something you input automatically or manually? When when you are being tested, mm. uh, probably I should do that also here. Let me just do it a quick you, one. You write down like where you. You, you indicate where you come from, right? Okay. They ask you for your residence, and uh, I'll do that. The medics will see something like this. There's a lab module, there's a testing center module, this is the sample collection points. The lab module is where the samples will be taken to be tested. Then there's the instant verification point. Behind this, sorry, behind this there are forms that are filled. Very short forms, they take barely 20 seconds. Uh, the lab one, it's only three, three things to be filled. A quick photo and um, negative or positive, declaring negative or positive. When you, when you declare your residence, the server automatically picks it up. These are the, this helps. If you used to live, let's say you live in Kilimani, for example, and uh, you tested negative yesterday, but today evening the government declares Kilimani a no-go zone, you know, a red, a hotspot, for whatever reasons, you know, they've learned probably there are more, there's more proliferation of the virus. They declared to be locked down, and you decide to disappear and you know pass over to Woodley. Migrate. Yeah, migrate. <laughs> <laughs> Short distance migration. Exodus. You can't, at Woodley, you can't get into a matatu, you can't get into any building, you can't get into any supermarket without producing your card. So you produce your card and boom, it shows your location. You should be taken back or quarantined because you're spreading the virus. That could have helped at the Isli, you know, the Isli problem we had the other day. 
Yeah, because no one knows where those guys are. Oh, come on. Yeah. I could, probably I came from Miss Lee. Yeah. And I'm living in a lodge in here. You can never tell. I should be actually locked down because the government had good reasons why Isli needs to be locked down. Mm. I have nothing against Isli, guys. Uh, <laughs> but the fact that I'm here, it means I'm interacting with you, I'm interacting with somebody you shouldn't be interacting with. I don't come from Isli, just an example. So with this, the government will be able to have a stronger arm to be able to control. You know, you put in, this is what they say in law, if you put in a measure, it needs to be enforceable. Mm. Enforceability means you need to be able to, you know, what if this doesn't happen? What should I do? Right now, for the people that have moved out, ask the government to bring back those people. Mm. It can, it can I, I like you. Idea and the application, especially in terms of enforceability, because I was having this conversation the other day yeah. with one of my friends. It's like, uh, you know, I know Isili very well, actually. Yeah. Uh, so if you say, I'm going to block uh, Isili from garage to St. Teresa's, <laughs> but don't talk. Yeah, because sure. the is an open <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's very tricky, but with this uh, innovation, like uh, innovations like Covident, uh, although I wish this will become number one, okay. uh, <laughs> it doesn't yes, mm, Not sure. just with COVID-19, but with all the other applications we just discussed. Yeah. Uh, so is there, is there any parting shot before we conclude? Parting shot, this African Renaissance, again, <laughs> it's time for Africans to rise up. Yes. I believe we have solutions for the world. Madagascar is doing it. Mm. Uh, we should be doing it also. We have, we have what it takes. And youths seize the moment. Ride the tide. Uh, that's the only way you're going to stand. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Bondi. Mr. Ezra. Ezra, uh, my parting shot is that uh, every challenge is an opportunity to f be stronger and forge ahead and get into innovations and come up with solid solutions. Uh, right now, Africa is uh, at a precipice and it's our opportunity to come out stronger through innovations, manufacturing, and self-sufficiency. And make that money. Yeah, and make that <laughs> money. And, <laughs> and reduce the amount of dependence of the outside world. And I think this is the time. And people, we have the ability to, to, to avail these solutions. Yeah. Thank you very That's much. It. Thank you, thank you very much for inspiring a lot of youth who are watching the Isaki right now. If you want to connect with them and find out more, the website is... nai.co.ke Mm. N-A-I dot C-O dot K-E. Yeah, nice. pretty Thank you easy. so much. Appear about as soon as the Tupata at Y254 channel using the hashtag Isaac that's on Facebook.